that one just felt like a leaf. Because I felt the weight, and I, just before, I'm thinking, do I have like a log or something that I'm pulling in? Letting it sit, I really felt him crunch it too. 10 seconds and he latched onto it. He hit it somewhat semi hard and then he started fighting, felt like a brick on the end of it. Yeah, 18 and a quarter inch. Back in the drink. See you, buddy. What did it feel like? That fish that I caught, it was so cold it felt like a wet roll of toilet paper. <laughs> that's a that's the best way I can think to describe it, okay? <laughs> wet roll of toilet paper. Do you feel how do you how do you feel when it hit? Singular, it single just dunk. He jacked it. What did the bite feel like? If preceding clips just confused the heck out of you, then you're not alone. Anglers try to assign colorful language to describe what they feel when they know or don't know that it's a fish. But only experience on the water in winter teaches that. What the following clips can do, however, is provide several tricks and good habits to speed up your learning curve on what it feels like. Even experienced hands miss the usually subtle to indetectable winter bite. So take each of these tips to heart. This segment alone may contribute more than all others to your success or failure as a winter angler. In the winter time, I really like the boat to be as, as stopped and as slow as possible. So with the anchor, you really get that. You actually get that. You get the boat as a stable platform so that you can fish and when you feel movement it's not the boat moving it's actually the uh it's actually the the fish moving the, the line so i use the anchor almost exclusively in the winter time i don't really use it too much other than that i was doing a lot of one hand paddling out there with the wind blowing down i really didn't feel like i was doing justice to uh to the spot so i hopped up onto this uh the scrub island here I'm using my parking pole the little stick it's a way to maintain boat position now i'll be able to get a finesse jig on there and know that it's it's still it's doing the dead stick thing because i'm still the other thing i got going for me to help me feel the bite a little bit better in this cold water is that the wind direction is just like this and I have my cast going along with it so as much as you can you want to cast with the wind and do shorter cast if you can I gotta get a little bit more line out there because of where I positioned I need to uh, I don't know where that last fish hit he was further out so I do need to get a lot of line out but at least the uh, the cast is with the wind and it's not creating a big bow in the line that's exactly what was happening when I was I was out there trying to position in current. And I was casting cross current, cross wind, and I just had a whole lot of line out there. So whenever that hit would come, I was less likely to feel it because of the slack in the line. And, and not so much just slack as as uh, as a bow in the line. I mean, you can have tension, but if you if you have that that curve in your line, it's. Uh, it's not a good thing. So, short cast, cast with the wind if there's wind, and most important, get yourself stationary. And you also don't need real long casts. The shorter the cast, the more you're going to feel that bite. For whatever reason, in winter, um, I don't worry about those real super long casts like I do in the summer. I mean, I don't think that they're they're half as spooky in the winter as they are. I mean, they are if you're. Oh, there we go. I was just sitting there. Oh, he's good. Hello there. Nothing over. And I was a shorter cast. I mean, that was, it just proves my point. This guy right here was about a third of the cast that I would make in the, uh, in the summertime. Especially while winter fishing, and especially while fishing jigs or tubes or something you're bouncing the bottom with. You want a real nice rod in terms of the sensitivity, 
the more sensitive rods are the ones that are uh, that are more lightweight. This one is a Walleye Series live bait rig. It's a St. Croix Legend Tournament Series, and it's their not quite their top of the line, but it's it's up there. <clears throat> Using this rod as opposed to you know one that's got a little bit more fiberglass in it or a little bit heavier clunkier you're not going to feel the bites as well with the you know the cheaper rods so if you're investing the time to come out here in the winter you ought to invest in a in a good sensitive rod but i do like braid for sensitivity it just it, it has no stretch and any little little nudge or nip or, or pick up or rub that you get you're gonna feel it just dragging it we, we saw we were, there was a ledge and we were feeling a ledge I dragged it down off that ledge I said to Jeff I felt something drop off there and I let it sit for like I don't know 15 seconds or so and whammo right there he was right now I feel it it dragging over some gravel um, sometimes you can feel it you know banging its way through some something that's a snag you, you can feel it banging its way through some chunk rock uh, you certainly know when it, it gets uh, it gets into a softer bottom that's that's part of pattern development you know knowing really uh, feeling what's out there without being out there well part of the trick is is not moving it around much because the more you move it around more you feel that it banging and, and there's a constant vibrational noise of it banging over rocks and tumbling. If you quiet that noise by letting it sit, when you do feel something, you'll know, hey, that's a fish. Sometimes you're just not going to feel it, and that's where a light wire hook comes into play. Yeah, you know, I've poured these on a poured these jig heads on a. Uh, in a do it mold and I'm using the lightest wire hook that I can get two things that I'm starting with today both feature a fine wire hook this is a strap jig this is the lure I've caught my coldest river smallmouth ever 32.4 degrees I caught something with this little rig here um, you can find the directions for making this if you if you do a search for strap jig on YouTube but it's a a hair jig that I've tied with a little octopus hook, a number four, and uh, basically they grab that, and as soon as they start moving, it's real sticky. You're, you know, you've got them. The other is the little tube here, and uh, this one I've rigged with a little, I've shoved a little glass rattle up in there. You know, the strap jig also has the glass rattle, and I think that's important to to talk to them in this muddy water. They they need to hear it. Uh, to find it but both of them feature this fine wire hook this really sticky hook and um, that's important because they'll, they'll grab it and most of the year you can feel it when they they pick it up you'll feel that tick well you're probably not gonna feel that today in in this you know probably mid mid 30 degree water um, you want something that as soon as they grab it it's it's they're gonna start moving with it as soon as they move at all that little thin hook goes right in them so both the the little tube here and the strap jig will do that for us